to the nearest exits and telling us how to fasten those seatbelts, they're at a higher risk of developing cancer. Here to tell us more about that risk that flight attendants face is our medical expert, Dr. Madeira Merrill with SSM Health. Good morning. Good morning. So this is a really interesting study because you don't really think about particularly what careers are dangerous in this right. way. So uh, what is this study showing and then what do you make of it? What kind of factors are at play here? This is really, really fascinating yeah. as well as partially alarming mm -hmm. and definitely tells us maybe we need to act more like the Europeans and regulate our flight attendants a little bit uh, stronger. So this was an interesting study that showed that flight attendants did show an increased risk of certain types of cancers. Some of them were the breast cancers, melanomas, other types of skin cancers, thyroid as well as uterine. There's lots of theoretical reasons mm -hmm. why. We don't know exactly why. We're definitely going to need more studies. But part of the reason or thought process is maybe it's the cosmic ionizing radiation that we often hear about. Is that playing a factor here? The fact that they're so high in the air and exposed to this often. Hmm. Is that playing a factor? Is it the fact that they have irregular sleep cycles? Their <laughs> circadian rhythm is interrupted. Sure. That, of course, lowers your immune system. Is it perhaps exposures to certain toxins like the jet fuels? Is it other types of chemicals on board? It would it would be very interesting now to compare the rates between European flight attendants mm -hmm. and American flight attendants and see, even though the European ones are restricted, do they have those same rates of breast cancer? That yeah. in itself would, of course, answer some questions. Well, and it's important to point out here that these are people who are constantly in the air, constantly Correct. on these planes. So us flying every once in a while occasionally is probably not going to yield the same results. Exactly. And so I hope nobody reads this headline or hears this story and says, wow, I'm never going to take a flight again. Right. But I think, of course, like you said, it's very important to recognize even if we are a frequent flyer, even if we fly once or twice a month, we're not reaching those levels that a flight attendant does. Um, of course, the time that you fly also makes a difference, apparently. Hmm. If you fly more at night, you're lowering your risk. If it's a shorter flight, you're also lowering your risk. It depends on things like solar flares happening, which, of course, we don't have control over. It's fascinating. But very fascinating, and, of course, looking at pilots in the future will be interesting as well. Absolutely. Uh, switching gears now, there was another study that came up recently showing about kids coming down or being at the hospital more after taking some certain medications and these medications are trying to help people get off of other exactly. medications. Yes. So that's pretty scary. Yes, Danica, we always talk about this opiate crisis. Yeah. What do we do about this opiate crisis? So there's actually a medication out there called buprenorphine and the goal of this is to help people with the opiate addiction or perhaps on high dose opiates. Unfortunately, this medication is very unique. It does act on that opiate receptor mm -hmm. as well as stimulating it and also blocking it. When it falls into the hands of children, you don't have that protection that adults have. The goal, of course, with this medication is to reduce that risk of that respiratory depression. But when children under the age of six get this, they actually have that respiratory depression. They have some of the other symptoms that we're trying to avoid. Hmm. So while this medication is helping change lives and save lives, it is having these unintended consequences. So the CDC, the Centers for uh, Poison Control have reported just the number of deaths as well as reported incidences have gone up. Yeah. Unfortunately, in the adolescent community, it's being used with that abuse potential. So again, if you're out there and you use this medication or any kind of opiate, really to follow some safe guidelines, always keep it locked, mm -hmm. stored away, uh, away for, from kids and adolescents to really um, be able to access. Yeah. Same rules apply. Yep, same rules apply. All right. Thank you, Dr. Mayer, for joining us. Appreciate it. Thank you. News 3 this morning. We'll be right back. Oh, no.